on the corner there was a guy that would make uh, sherbet. Sherbet, yeah. And you put seven up in it. Yeah. Right. Fucking lose. Bronx had shit you never tasted right. before. You know, wow. they had those candy stores that they'd make you the egg creams. Yeah. And the fucking pizza was to die for. But then we got rid of it like in 71. And then right. I used to go to the Bronx and do Santeria stuff. Or right. Like they eat fried bananas and pork chops because nobody makes a fucking pork chop. Like a Puerto Rican. I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you. That skinny pork chop <laughs> skinny, yeah. with some red beans and fried rice and oh, fried bananas. I, I love red beans and Oh, fried my God. When I used to have, uh, I used to, you know, date these Puerto Rican girls and they would make me uh, aras con pollo, which I loved. I, that was one, that's how I got introduced to Puerto Rican food. And I, I love loved all it. that shit. I loved all that shit. I love, yeah, I love growing up in the Bronx. People always go, how did you, you know, your childhood must have been really rough. And I go, it really wasn't. I got, I got, it was a beautiful childhood. I loved it. It really was. I mean, did I see some violent things? I mean, obviously, I wrote Bronx Tale from the killing that I saw when I was sitting on my stoop. But I had a great childhood. I, I can't complain about it. I really can't. I don't want people to think I lived in this drug-infested area. No, it, it was an Italian neighborhood. Everybody was Italian. Everybody hung out. Everybody stuck together. Nobody locked their doors. Was there violent shit that happened? Yes. But I loved growing up there, man. You know, I just, I loved growing up there. I can't help it, man. It's yeah. a real life. When I would go up there as a child, I looked at it as a real I even went to the the boys' club because we were there, the there boys one club summer. There. Yeah. And my mother put me in the camp at the boys' club. That's the first time I realized I was a failure because I couldn't pass the test to get the president's exam. You got to do like 50 push-ups, 50 sit-ups. Yeah. And I couldn't do the pull-ups, cocksuckers. Right, right. I couldn't do the pull-ups. So yeah, pull-ups are hard, man. Pull-ups were hard. And right. they used to give us like a little box lunch. And I, I just remember the pizza. Oh, the if pizza. I really got to remember something from the Bronx in those days was how the cheese just dripped. And right. the fucking, the flavor. I never got that again. It was just, that's why I learned how to eat all that stuff. And the sandwiches. Wet mutts, fucking tremendous. Oh, mutts. You're like Italian. Fucking, yeah. dog, I grew, I ate that <laughs> shit from the Mutz. time I was four to like six, yeah. and then it got taken away from me. And then I was back in New York City, eating Puerto Rican food, pizza, yeah. all that shit. And then my mom had a bar in Union City. Right. So I would have to go visit her. And then finally one day she goes, we're moving to Jersey, I can't take the commute no more. Yeah. So we moved to a town called North Bergen. And what happened in North Bergen in the early 70s it was the influx from the Italians in Hoboken who were now got like good jobs. They yeah. were moving up. It's like moving on up. The Jeffersons moved up to Brooklyn right. got a house. You move out of the Brooklyn projects. Brooklyn went to Jersey. Brooklyn You're went right. to Jersey. That's right. Uh, boy, uh, Bronx went to Westchester. Yes. yes. So it was funny that how I never really had Italians around me again to 73. I went back to North Bergen and North Bergen, and I, I didn't know those Italian people I was raised with were very special. That era of Italian were very special, and I couldn't put my fucking finger on it. What made these, like, we won the States when I was in the eighth grade. My high school won the fucking number one seed, Whoa. and not one kid was over 5'8". The names were Avillo and Rick really? Capozzi, and, and there were these little fire plugs, and they ran behind the high school with helmets in 90-degree weather to get better. They, were, they brought the Italian work ethic to football, yeah. and they became this team. And then I watched the HBO thing on Sinatra, and that's why I put it all together. I always tell people I was raised by Hoboken Italians because pretty much everybody I hang out with, from the Barones to Messinas, right. the Lanos, they're right. all from Hoboken. It's said that those Hoboken Italians used to get tortured by the Irish. Yeah. They were not allowed to go up, up by 9th Street. They weren't allowed to pass 9th Street, the Irish. You can't tell Italian people not to walk past 9th Street. Yeah. So they probably had so much anger that yeah. they moved up to North Bergen, and that anger got passed on to me because I grew up with them. Yeah. But it was a, and now yeah. I had my own anger from being a revolutionary Cuban. Remember, right. in my house, when you walked in, they had a picture of Fidel with blood coming out of his head next to fucking Jesus, you know? Wow. Because the pre-revolutionary Cubans <laughs> hate Fidel. They were first generation. Right, they, hate they got their shit taken that's from right, them. That's right, that's right. So they would cry. Right. They would fucking go, we're going to kill that motherfucker. So here I had these anti 
that these Italians that were held back, and here right. I'm coming from an anti-revolutionary house, it's a perfect fucking combination in heaven. For anger. For <laughs> anger and throwing things and robbing trains and fucking lighting bowls on fire. Like a lady yeah. in, in our neighborhood had a little bowl in the house with goldfish. Every right. night we put liquid fire on it and light it on fire. We burned the fucking goldfish. Oh, Every God. morning the chick had fish and chips for breakfast. I mean, oh. it, was, it was fucking crazy. You know, and I learned that heart that they had. And even now, I've moved back here now to Jersey, and there's a lot of Staten Island Italians. I've been here two years. I've not heard the language of Italian. You haven't? No. Wow. These generations didn't pass that they, No, we didn't that. do it. See, my mother and father, they said, hey. Piss me the we're fuck Ameri off. We're Americans now. We don't speak that language. And my mother did the same thing. They my did mother, that to me. My mother also said, outside, you got to speak English because you're an American. Right. In here... We're still Cuban. See, my kids, he's learning Italian. My daughter speaks Italian. My wife speaks Italian. All three, except me. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. Fucking believe that? You it's didn't terrible. take it in high school? Nothing like yeah, that? Yeah, but I, you know, I was terrible in high school. I, when I went to Bronx Community College, I'm, I, you know, I went to the community college. I started learning. I started applying myself to really, to better myself. Well, when I was in high school, I just wanted to fucking my own girls. You know, fuck around with my friends. You know, it was terrible. And you, know. you went to college. What did you major in? Did you even? drama? Did you? Yes. Oh, I always wanted to be an actor. Okay. Always, even when I was like 10, 11. 10, 11 years old, because I saw. Um, I, I remember my mother used to take me to the movies, and I saw um, Marlon Brando. And uh, you know, years a few years after it came out, I saw it on TV. My mother showed me Marlon Brando on the waterfront, which was my best movie of all time for me. And I just always wanted to be an actor. I just always wanted to be an actor. And I wanted to write. I used to write poetry back then. I wrote lyrics for a song, for songs. And I just, I knew what I wanted to do, and that was it. And you were part of a musician also? I was a singer in the band. I wasn't a musician, no. Okay. No. But I would write lyrics. I had a hit song on the, uh, the R&B charts. It went to number 28. A group called, uh, uh, the song was Meet the Beat. I can't remember the group, they're the old black group that did it. I just can't remember them, but for RSO Records. But it went to 28, didn't make any money, I got fucked out of it, you know, but that's all right. <laughs> you know, back then they just said, yeah, give him a fucking cheese sandwich, you know. <laughs> and so I, I didn't do that, but uh, no, but the, but I, I enjoyed writing, I always wrote. I always write short stories and things. And then obviously what happened was when I when I couldn't make it anymore, but it's everybody knows the story, I wrote Bronx Tale. Um, and my career just took off. It just exploded, you know. It just fucking exploded. Did you see it coming? No. I wrote Bronx Tale to get an agent. I had to get an agent. I just... <laughs> no, 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 not at all. No, no. I, I just said I got to get noticed. I got fired. I was working at this fucking club bouncing because I ran out of money. Music